The IPE is a multidisciplinary body and one of the world's leading centers of excellence in petroleum engineering. Its work covers all aspects of oil and gas exploration and production and, as well as teaching, it's heavily involved in research with industrial partners, which can present daily challenges. Well, on a daily basis, we are making the balance always between doing the cutting-edge new research which is required to tackle operational problems and at the same time satisfy the industry sponsors of our research who have got big oil field projects where they need to keep the, the wells producing, they need to keep the shareholders happy and there can be a conflict between those op that operational immediacy and the longer term research that we're, we're, we're doing. But what we can do is uh, honestly uh, say that the research that we are doing is facilitating the role of oil and gas in the energy mix, whatever that is deemed politically to be longer term, we can get more oil and gas out of basins like the North Sea, uh, and that is playing some role, some small role perhaps, in keeping the oil and gas price under control, stopping it uh, inflating uh, any faster, and that's good for uh, energy costs for all of us. Spin-out companies that develop tools and techniques to help industry partners highlight some of the IPE's successes. One spin-out success is Hydrofact, which has developed software and hardware to monitor and inhibit gas hydrates in oil and gas production systems. These hydrates build up in production pipelines, and can cause blockages that cost the industry millions of dollars in lost production every year. HydroFlash and HydroCheck are the company's solutions to the problem. HydroFact's managing director, Professor Baman Tahidi, also works at Harriet Watt University. HydroFact background goes to 1978 when the research activity in PVT and hydrate started in university. We developed know-how, we developed capability, and that resulted to an opportunity to uh, basically um, have a technology transfer. Um, so whatever that we have the leading edge research that we have in university, we can translate that to a language which is immediately usable to the industry you know, having hardware to simulate the conditions in a, in a pipeline or a process facilities and to see whether that condition is conductive to formation of solid. You know, particularly we are interested in what we call gas hydrate, which are solids similar to ice, but they can form at temperature much higher than zero and therefore uh, they can be quite nuisance in oil and gas production. I believe that we have been successful in that respect because we are now, as I said, commercializing several university patents and obviously benefiting from the know-how developing university. Another spin-out from the IP is Epistemy, which is developing risk analysis software as well as providing training and consultancy services. We kind of formed as a company um, just over two years ago now. Our software is um, something that tells you the risk involved in making a decision. So what we do is it's for producing fields. So if you have production data, we're able to integrate that production data into the model and give you all the possible models that match that data and then give you forecasts from those models. That tells you how much oil is going to come out of the ground between this and this range. And from that, you can make decisions. So there's a lot of complex maths and computer science and things like that in there that go into that. So it's taken us about two years to develop that software. I think that's quite a typical story of a spin-out company though. Um, one of the good things about being very small is your, being, your ability to be very nimble, ability to change the plan to adjust very rapidly because you don't have this big uh, hierarchical system where you, it takes a long time to make a decision. If we're very small, very flat, we can make a decision like that if we need to to change. One man who has been through the whole cycle from student to entrepreneur and back is Dr. Lawrence Omerod. He's now an honorary research fellow at the IPE after some 20 years in the energy industry, developing new companies and technologies and selling them on to bigger industry players. 
I came here as a student and the particular spin-out I ended up engaged with was a student project the year before and it was a piece of software. And then when I was back here visiting, I saw they'd made this small company. It was perhaps uh, three people by then, but I thought it seemed exciting and interesting and it was an area I was interested in personally. So I joined them. Over the next 10 years, we grew it to over 100 people and we had offices in seven countries around the world. Uh, we developed other products and about a third of the people were outside Edinburgh. And about uh, seven or eight years ago, we sold that to a large American company, uh, one of the so-called big four oil field service companies, Weatherford, but it's still an operational, uh, still a research center now. Lawrence is also exploring the potential of unconventional energy sources through setting up a shale gas project at Harriet Watt University. The extraction of this type of gas has brought the term fracking, that's hydraulic fracturing, more to public notice. This is where highly pressurized fluids are drilled into a rock layer to create new channels to release the gas. I think it's going to be very important. It's already made a massive change in North America gas. Some 20% of the US gas is now from shale gas, which is extraordinary because 10 years ago hardly anybody had heard of it. Um, now it looks like there's massive potential in the UK and in Eastern Europe especially. The key issue really is that two things, one it's on land. Now in North America people are accustomed to onshore drilling, Texas, the nodding donkeys that you see in the movies, whereas here in Europe all our oil's been offshore. So I think that that's the, that that's the key issue really in Europe, is people have this very high environmental standard, rightly so and the industry has to rise to that challenge and convince people that it will be safe and secure and, and won't damage us. So this is one challenge for the future and despite its success the IPE does face others. Well the future of IPE has to be uh, strong, it has to be something that we could look forward to with a lot of optimism uh, because although in the very very long term the importance of oil and gas will find a new balance with respect to other energy sources. It is very clear that oil and gas is absolutely pivotal in the uh, world economy today and that is going to be the case for at least 20 or 30 years out into the future and IPE here has a global reputation and a global significance in playing a role in both the research to enable oil and gas be produced more efficiently and Equally importantly, the teaching of the individuals who are going to be out there in the industry running the companies, making sure that that gas is, and oil is produced efficiently and safely for decades to come. The location of the IPE, adjacent to the Heriot Watt University campus and alongside some major players in the oil and gas field, is seen as vital, along with the spirit of collaboration that's so evident here. It is vitally important for us to work closely with our colleagues in the other schools of the university because they complement the skills that we have and help us address problems uh, more effectively. So that dimension is, is really important and it does mean that anyone who would be choosing to work with uh, us is not just picking IPE, you're actually getting the full strength of technical skills across the whole of Heriot Watt University. Because we are a, a, a knowledge-based company and being here just basically putting an emphasis on that, that we are a knowledge-based company, um, you know, we have very strong backing with respect to uh, technical knowledge uh, thanks to Heritage Watt University and it's perfect, you know, location to have a company, a knowledge-based company here. I think the advantages of having um, the, the locations here and, and still being around um, IP and Harriet Watt is the, is the integration with the other researchers and the, being close to the people who are doing the, the, the new sets of research, the new, the new technology that's going to come into our product later on helps us understand the landscape that we'll be in in five, six, seven years time. We, wanna, we want to produce the best technology and the software for the industry so that they can make the best decisions. So uh, we've got the best of both worlds really with the, with the offices we have in the different locations I think.